Next speaker is Pro Professor Sininat uh, from Faculty of Economics, Chudalongkorn University, and she will be presenting her paper on digital connectivity in ASEAN, opportunities and challenges. Professor Sininat, floor is yours, 15 minutes. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Pabi, for your kind introduction. So um, let me start by sharing the screen. Okay, so the slide, okay. And see it, nice, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you for your response. Okay, so um, let me start by um, saying about my talk today is gonna be about the digital connectivity in ASEAN opportunity and challenge. Um, the outline of my presentation is going to be like as follow. So I will start with the role of digital connectivity and then uh, look into digital connectivity in ASEAN briefly. Okay. And uh, after that, um, even though my focus is on ASEAN, but um, as right now we have AOIP and also looking at the broader perspective about the Indo-Pacific and one of the uh, cooperation inside is connecting the connectivities. So in the, um, I think it's an opportunity to, you know, like add one more aspect about the digital one to make it like the uh, comprehensive picture about the overall connectivity and then come to the conclusion. Okay, uh, let me start with the point number one about the role of digital connectivity. Um, even though the, the title of the uh, topic today is about the post pandemic, but I would say that in terms of digital, it actually happened um, before the COVID pandemic and also during the pandemic period and also afterwards. So I will say um, this is one of the topic that um, we, we should pay attention to. Uh, so with that one, what is the role of digital connectivity? To sum up, I will say that um, we can think about the competitiveness of the country in the digital period. So we have to start from how do we connecting things and then we can develop economic transaction afterward. And also during the pandemic period, um, this is one way that uh, the digital uh, technology that the company used during the pandemic is one way to respond and mitigate the effect. And um, it, people will continue to use that even after the pandemic. So um, that is a sum up, but in detail, what are the channels that they adjust in and payroll in our economy? I would say that we can start from production. Uh, with the digital connectivity, it facilitates the uh, digital investment and also how to utilize this kind of technology. So in terms of production, um, one thing during the pandemic, we can see that uh, with the social distancing and also the crossing down in terms of the movement of the people, uh, some companies, some firm decide to use the technology instead of um, you know, like some labor. And also another one that's very important is about the uh, monthly student supply chain. And um, you know, like the COVID-19, uh, give an experience about uh, what we should think again about how can we uh, linking the connection between, you know, like regional production network and uh, if something happened, what can be the alternative? In this one, digital can play role as well. Uh, in the third point, it's going to be about the digital trade. I would say that this one is a complement to the existing business in terms of, you know, like normal trade, but right now people go online in terms of e-commerce. So we talk about other digitally. But another one that also coming up for um, a new channel or a new kind of business, uh, some kind of service right now we can deliver digitally. We can think about the, you know, like program, we can think about the storage online, cloud computing and so on. And also for entertainment, we can think about the streaming. So um, with this kind of connectivity, it's not only uh, complement what we already have, but also open up for the new opportunity. Uh, the fourth point, this is also one of the very important one about opening up the opportunity for startup and MSME. So um, with the digital technology, so it kind of like the firm that just small starting their new business, but they have opportunity to, you know, like use technology to uh, connect them to the global market easier. So this is one of the uh, benefit of the digital connectivity. And the fifth point, uh, I would say last but not least, um, it's also in terms of FDI as well. Um, after the pandemic, um, in, beside the determinant of um, FDI that we usually mention about market seeking, efficiency seeking, strategic seeking, and so on, 
they also looking at the country where they have good healthcare system and also digital friendly infrastructure. So to be competitive in the future, digital connectivity is one of the factor here. So to sum up here, we can think about uh, how it payroll before, during, and also after the pandemic. Um, how about in ASEAN? Um, this is one example to show you that um, with the digital connectivity, um, there are opportunity for ASEAN economy to expand. So this one is the uh, value of the internet economy that come from uh, for business that you can see from the right hand side, the e-commerce, travel online, the online media and so on from six ASEAN country. So what you can see is that we, we have uh, potential to you know, expand the market in the future. Even though this one, you know, like we, uh, they, they announced it during the pandemic and um, you can expect to see more growth in the future. So you see that um, this is what are the potential, what are the benefits that uh, the economy can realize in the future. And another thing is about the contribution of the uh, digital economy. In terms of ASEAN, so we have like around 7% of GDP come from digital economy. So more room for the region to, um, you know, like get into those benefits in the future. Okay. So from that one, we, we see why is it interesting about the digital connectivity. But what exactly is the digital connectivity? So this one uh, summarized into three main groups and um, it's kind of like replicate what, what we mentioned in the ASEAN connectivity in general as well about physical, uh, software and people. So this one in the same pattern, but just a little different perspective. Uh, what, what they are in terms of digital connectivity, they have component. The first one is about the digital infrastructure. So um, to access to the system. So what do we need? First, we need the network coverage. So we can think about 4G and 5G technology right now. Think about the area of the people who can access to the internet, the coverage of the area. Uh, the second point for the, in, in the in this, uh, digital infrastructure is about the quality, the speed of the internet connection. So we use it for, uh, let's say the general communication is okay, but we also think further about to use it in the production uh, aspect. Think about the company who use a 5G technology to use the internet of things for, you know, like complement their production. And the third point here for the digital infrastructure is um, one of the very important one is about the affordability. So um, to get access to the internet, uh, first we need to have the device. The simplest form is a smartphone. Second, we need to be able to pay for the subscription fee for access to the internet. This is another one that um, is a, one of the factors that um, policymakers need to consider as well because it will affect what we call digital divide, whether people afford to, to get to the internet or not, do they left behind in the economy, something like that. Okay, so that is the first component of the digital connectivity. Uh, the second one is about the digital skill and literacy. Um, we think we see that in ASEAN, uh, student or the young generation, they use the internet all the time, but that is for the user in general. But in terms of uh, the economy, we also looking forward into something deeper, be able to analyze, to evaluate, and also to be the one that can be the service provider in the future. So it's not just like only using, okay? And the third point is one of the, you know, like uh, starting right now and um, keep moving. It's about the privacy and cybersecurity declaration. Um, because digital economy is new and um, many things go online. So it's difficult to capture what we can include, even for something like digital trade. Right now, the definition is still, you know, like not finalized yet, it's still moving and try to come up with the one that cover um, the real activity. So in the same pattern with the regulation as well, uh, the real practice is keep moving, but also the regulation need to catch up as well. So what are those um, major regulation that relate to this topic? Uh, it's about the Personal Data Protection Act and also the cybersecurity law. So um, to have the smooth and secure connectivity in digital world, so these are the three main uh, component that we have to take into account. Okay. Um, from those aspects, 
um, they are the survey from ASEAN Secretariat when they decide, when they come up with the digital uh, master plan in 2025. So these are the uh, answer. What are the barriers to achieve those, uh, you know, like development? And you, as you can see here, um, let's look at the top three factor. So the lack of digital literacy among the end user is uh, number one here, followed by the lack of infrastructure investment and also the lack of harmonization in terms of um, country from ASEAN. So what you can see here is, um, you know, like we still need to develop in many aspects in order to move into the future. So from that point, um, uh, what I would like to mention in this slide is that um, right now in, in the digital economy here, um, to me, I would say that in connecting the connectivity right now as uh, is mentioned as the cooperation in the OIP, um, it's not only about physical connectivity that, that we see in general, uh, in that they talk about technology, digital as well, but not in depth into, you know, like the whole system or network. So to see the complete and um, overall picture, I would say that um, not only connecting between, you know, the system, the connectivity between the country in ASEAN, but also in terms of digital and the physical one as well. Uh, one key example that you can see, why do they need each other? We can think about e-commerce, for example. People buy things online. They can pay uh, using the e-payment or pay when they receive the product, but at the end, they need to deliver the product anyway. So those kind of things complement with each other. Okay. So from that one, uh, let's come to the point that um, what should be next and what can we conclude from briefly looking at the digital connectivity in ASEAN. Okay. So the first point is going to be what should ASEAN member states do to improve the digital connectivity? Uh, one thing that uh, we have to keep in mind, as many uh, speakers mentioned before, um, we have different countries in ASEAN. We are not at the same speed or same level. So we have different state of digital development. Uh, for example, we can think about um, Singapore and Malaysia as the one that, uh, you know, like they have infrastructure. What they're looking forward or focus on going to be something like encourage the business to use the connect uh, digital technology and so on. So that's on the state of that development. But for some country, infrastructure is still necessarily one. So um, I would say that to, to develop together is working the same pattern when we talk about AEC anyway. Some group focus on one section and another group can focus on another section. Uh, the second point that I think uh, what ASEAN member states should do is uh, one key is about the physical infrastructure. Um, this is one of the challenge that uh, ASEAN member facing right now because um, to, to talk about infrastructure investment here is the whole system is uh, about the, you know, like underwater cable and so on. So many kind of investment and technology. Uh, to come to the solution to this one, we need coordination from many parties. Okay, that's one, that's the first point. Uh, second challenge is that we not only need connectivity, but we need the meaningful connectivity, um, the quality and the access. And also last but not least, how can we overcome the digital divide is the key here. So from that one, um, to talk about those challenge together, uh, one way to do that is um, government have to pay the reading low in you know, this kind of investment. And also don't leave the private sector behind because they are the one that you know, have a lot of technology. So PPP, public private partnership can be one solution. And another one is about the foreign investment in which um, you can see right now from the news, um, country in ASEAN, have a lot of foreigners who come to invest in this kind of digital infrastructure. Okay, uh, what else? The third part is going to be about the digital skill and literacy. So this one, as I mentioned before, so it's not only gather and create the content, but also we, they need to be able to evaluate and think about uh, how to be the service provider as well. So um, we still need to develop uh, the, the young generation in the future. And also some people mentioned about the uh, least skill for the elderly people as well, since we are entering the aging society. Okay. Uh, what else? Another one is about the regulation, as I mentioned before. Uh, ASEAN, the challenge is that ASEAN country, we have different position and pairs in terms of relating rule 
setting. So some already have the uh, Personal Data Protection Act, some still working on it. And these are things that um, it may take some time to you know, like come up in, in uh, most of the ASEAN country and then really connecting together. And the last point is going to be about the regional uh, framework. So, um, okay, what do we mean here? We talk about digital economy related arrangement um, in which right now, uh, most of the ASEAN country, uh, they join the collaboration in, under the ASEAN Digital Master Plan, the framework on PDPA and also the agreement on e-commerce, but in terms of individual country only see in the case of Singapore, who uh, joined with um, Chile, New Zealand, and also Australia here. So the other countries still only under ASEAN group here. Another one that uh, important come from the fact that the, one of the key assets of the digital economy is the data. So um, what we need to think further is about the collaboration about the digital data governance um, ASEAN is working on it right now. I would say it's in the early stage though. So um, what do we looking for? Um, when you talk about data, it's uh, privacy and things related to that. So the free flow of data we trust is something that uh, ASEAN still need to work more in the future. Okay. So that's from um, ASEAN perspective. And you can see that uh, many of them, many of the challenge that ASEAN facing uh, can get the opportunity from looking at the bigger scope from Indo-Pacific as well. Okay. So um, first, ASEAN can think about how to cooperate with the other country in Indo-Pacific region. Okay. Uh, second main point, which is happening right now too, um, I found many literature mentioned that uh, many country interested in you know, Indo-Pacific and digital connectivity is one of the key that they mentioned. Okay. So what they can do here, they can think about uh, encourage the telecom company to invest in telecommunication infrastructure in ASEAN. And also they can build a partnership uh, to help in terms of setting up the framework, to help in terms of those uh, rule and regulation and also the enforcement. Okay. So with this point here, um, it is a challenge for ASEAN. When you look at the bigger scope, it is one of the opportunity as well. But with that opportunity, also the new challenge come in anyway. Um, so um, when you think about creating the network and then you have to connect them together, uh, the issue come to the point that if um, each ASEAN country, we cooperate, we build a partnership with different partners, uh, whether they have the same system or not, do they connect it together and now about the framework. We can think back to the trend situation that we having before about different spec, different characteristics. So this one may be, um, another new challenge that uh, ASEAN we face. And one more thing is about the, you know, like we're talking about the hard power, soft power. I would say this is another smart power that, um, you know, like open the field for uh, many countries that come to, um, I would say, join and, you know, competing that in ASEAN. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Sinina, for an excellent presentation. Looking forward to the paper. Uh, I'm sure there would be many interests, particularly on this subject, you know, those who are looking at Indo-Pacific architecture. Now,